Hello, Tordred here. So this is going to be my first video here on YouTube, and I want to base this channel's content uh, around working on fog fundamentals, fog picks and COs, maps, you name it. I have been pretty invested into the fog leaderboard on Advanced Wars by Web. Currently, I'm a top 10 player on the leaderboard. Previously, I was rank one. So hopefully some of my commentary on different subjects regarding FOG will be uh, fairly informed. And hopefully it can help you work on your own game. So today, uh, I even though I am known as the tank person uh, in the FOG community, I uh, wanted to start off this video talking about arguably my own favorite unit, which is the Battlecopter. So let's get right into it. So let's start talking about the Battlecopter. So the Battlecopter is 9,000 funds to produce and requires an airport. Uh, the stats of the Battlecopter are pretty similar to a tank offensively. Pretty much the damage rolls you're going to find on tanks versus other units are pretty similar with the Battlecopter. Uh, the only real notable exception is that uh, the Battlecopter will do worse into recons. Um, so tanks are usually better for doing with recons. Uh, the best uh, uses of the Battlecopter are combined alongside the tank. So if you can use a Battlecopter plus a tank to kill another tank, you're not only saving a lot of health on both units, uh, but you're also, it's a very nice clean finish that has a lot of maneuverability to it. Uh, the other very strong usage of Battlecopters is against other Battlecopters, since they'll do most of the health of the other Battlecopter and pretty much neuter it for the rest of the match. Um, the other sort of less common usage of the Battlecopters is using them against heavier tech-up options, such as medium tanks. And they do pretty well against medium tanks, mostly for the reason that they take almost no damage from every other unit except for anti-airs and other battlecopters. So you can use them uh, to get a bunch of chip onto high priority units. So another very valuable part of the battlecopter is that it enables you to have a higher unit count. Because whenever you build a battlecopter, you're using f one more production facility. So if you have a base with only two bases and one airport, building a battlecopter every turn or on a lot of turns uh, provides you uh, three units each turn instead of two. So uh, it can be a nice alternative to teching up and building an infantry. You can build a battlecopter, a tanker, an anti-air, an artillery, and then an infantry. And you want to keep you do that to keep your unit counts high which makes Battlecopters a lot more viable on uh, base light maps than uh, typical three base maps. And as I said, the Battlecopters do provide you a little bit of coverage against those land tech up units. So if your opponent has a medium tank, but you have a lot more air units, like you have three additional Battlecopters over your opponent uh, and you've been winning the air, uh, it provides you the ability to take care of those medium tanks and neo tanks without having to build a direct counter, such as like a bomber or your own Neo tank. Uh, the other big uh, upside to Battlecopters is that they have very strong mobility. They don't, they move one tile, no matter what the terrain of the square they're moving on is. Uh, the six movement is pretty solid for uh, a unit. And they can go into a lot of areas that normal units can't, such as mountains or rivers. And that just gives you a lot more uh, options to attack and different methods you can do to pressure your opponent when they might be centered around a very defensive location like a mountain or a river. So next I want to go over uh, some COs that are particularly good with copters. Um, Olaf, Eagle, and Max are pretty much, I think, like the best three copter users in the game. And they're all in tier two. So when you're playing a tier two match, 
there's a lot of incentive for you to actually go for these battle copters. Uh, so in order, I kind of put them in order of how strong I think their battle copter game is. And I think maybe surprisingly, I think Olaf has the best copters in the game just because of his Winter's Fury. Winter's Fury is such a strong super. And what the, the snow that is created as a result of Winter's Fury gives you a lot more room to play with your copters. Since anti-air will have a lot harder time moving through the snow to get to them, and enemy copters will only have three movement, so, and be weakened by Winter's Fury. So it's, there's very, it's like a great time to go aggressive with copters and not have really any chance for your opponent to counterattack you with them, or just limited counterattack potential. The Winter's Fury damage also sets up uh, your copters to one-shot enemy copters uh, if they don't have any defensive bonuses. If they're eagle copters, uh, it's I think it's a bit of a roll, um, but still they'll give you really good trades. Uh, max copters are a little bit different because you can have a little bit more reach with them, especially with powers and such. So, in general, Max is going to do more damage with them on a day-to-day -day basis, but I think the game-ending potential with them is a little bit better with Olaf. Eagle also has a lot of play with Copters, because Lightning Strike is so much more powerful when you're able to get more angles of attack on one location. Uh, but I just find that it always comes in a little bit too late. Um in games. If you're playing against Olaf, he'll come in Winter's Fury you, he'll move his copters in, uh, your copters will all be damaged, they'll be in snow, it'll be really hard to play. If you're going, if Eagle's going against Max, Max's copters can just kind of go in during a power, try to blow up all his units, and then you kind of have a dangerous situation on your hands. Um, but in general, all three of these can make copters work in their own different ways. Um, that can be a little bit more game ending than other COs. Uh, some other COs that I didn't put on here, but are generally pretty good with copters. Adder is really great with copters because of his plus one movement that he could activate a lot of times, so that has his copters can do a lot of copter on copter action because of their increased range. Uh, Andy can use copters pretty well if he's fighting copter into copter. Uh, a lot of the time, his copters will come away hurt, but then he can hyper-repair them and get them back into the mix. Uh, actually, the other CO, from, one from Tier 1, uh, Hawk, I think, is also pretty good with copters, since his superpower and power will heal uh, 1 or 2 HP respectively. And that can be really useful with copters for uh, getting that little chip damage that you might take from infantry or tanks or even getting enemy copters down into that like 8 HP range where you might be able to one-shot them. Uh, it's I think it's pretty nice. Because um, it keeps your units topped off, where a lot of units, you probably won't take only two damage with them in a lot of cases, so his power is a little bit more situational for being useful for the heal. Um, but those are kind of the COs, I think, that you should think about when you're looking at a Balcopter build. So let's get straight into a example of a match I had with Mobliv on the map Struggle Grinding. So a little bit about this map before we get into the example. This is a really strong Balcopter map for two reasons. First is its base light, so having an extra vehicle being built every turn in the form of a Balcopter helps you keep your infantry count high while still having a lot of light vehicles that can move around this map and pressure lots of fronts um, without teching up. Second reason is that there's a ton of terrain that Battlecopters benefit from on this map. There are these nice rivers that sort of separate the bottom and center areas of the map, and Battlecopters can just fly over that easy and provide a lot of pressure. Second thing is the mountains in this map are really nice choke points, especially for artillery, which is our artillery is really great on this map. Uh, and Balacopters can help you break those positions and start aggressing onto your opponent onto their side of the map. So there's a lot of good reasons why you would build Balacopters, and both me and my opponent have a ton of Balacopters. 
So, the example I want to show here is something I like to call a forced move. So, in this situation on this map, uh, I have supered earlier in the game and gotten a nice advantage. And Mobliv is just saving up his super. He didn't have a good chance for it immediately after mine. So he was trying to build up and create enough of a wall break onto my position that he can super me and completely destroy my army before I get a uh, ability to counter. So right here, this is this Battlecopter Agnes tile here is forcing a move out of Moblu. Because there's only two options to kill it. You can use two Battlecopters from the river tiles or onto a city tile, and that will finish off that unit. Or you can use an anti-air from the city spot specifically to kill this Battlecopter. The reason this is so um, powerful is I will show you in a second. So Mobliv does what I say, and he uses the city tile to kill the Copter. But what this does is this isn't really a bad trade for me at all. In fact, because I am gaining power gauge from this every single time I engage in it, um, it's slowly letting me build up super without giving him a good opportunity to attack. Because you see, having this anti-air on this city actually makes attacking into this formation really difficult to fully break it like he would like to. Because this anti-air would happen, would really like to attack the tank that's in this forest. Because otherwise, it's really hard to start finding two-hit kills on all my units. If instead this unit was something like a tank and, and Jake Super Artillery could blow it up, then he might have a chance to use a medium tank to come in, break this position, and then come in with tanks, reveal this... By hitting a tank over on the road, he could reveal this spot in the forest, shoot it with another artillery, and then break it with a tank on a city. But because he doesn't have that option, uh, it makes it really difficult and allows me to kind of stall out this position. So, what I can do, do some of my moves, kill off this anti-air, and then next turn, I do the exact same thing. I, 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 you know, I pressure a little bit with copters, I just want to see what he has. A little bit of a scout and copter. And then I can, you know, continue to cap this city non-stop to, you know, have an infantry on the front lines. And then I can move another copter up to this position. I know that if I bring up a tank here, this is just a dead unit. But by putting this copter here, I can continually make this a really obnoxious position to break. So then Mobliv, next turn, he decides, okay, I'm going to beat down. I'm going to try and break this position. I wanna, don't want to commit everything. I don't want to commit my super, but I want to get enough damage onto this battle copter that I can kill it and then reveal this tank so I can start trying to break this position down. Problem with this is that this is kind of exactly what I want. I want him to show that, okay, like he's choosing the battle copter option, which is kind of an inferior option to using the anti air, but it is something that you want to do if you want to be a little bit more aggressive with your positioning. Especially during a power. So, at this point, then once I've stalled him out and forced these moves onto my copter every single turn, now I can fully engage onto him and I can use my super. So, I end up just going in with all my units. I can use the copters onto the tiles where my other units wouldn't be able to move, such as the rivers and the mountains. And then I can use the tanks to go in on the land tiles. So that allows me some more options for a wall break. So I can utilize copter maneuverability. I can utilize the fact that this copter is kind of forcing a move that's a more defensive style move when Mobiliv wants to be more aggressive. Um, and both of those factors make my copter usage pretty nice on this one. So... For our final match of the day to show some examples of battle copters, I've got one of my favorite matches of recent history, and it's myself versus Hogat on the map Hidden Edge. Now, Hogat is probably one of the best players on Fog right now, um, if not the best. Uh, I still have not beaten him once, and pretty much every single time I play him, it's always an amazing experience just to learn what he's doing and and try to take something from 
So this game in particular is one where his Balcopter positioning was so immaculate that I think it deserves to be a great example for anyone learning how to use Balcopters. And in the end, uh, spoilers, I lost, but uh, we both thought that the Balcopter usage in this game was basically the deciding factor, and that the Balcopter side was actually maybe stronger than the two base side. So we're going to start getting straight into this example. This is a early on in the game. I'm playing pretty aggressive with my tanks because it's max. I want to just smash stuff. I felt pretty good. I had gotten like some early pickoff infantry. I felt, you know, a little cocky, but moving into this copter range, I thought to myself like, oh, there's no way that I can be stopped. If the copter hits me, I can use an anti-air, come back with my own tanks. I'll have some good play, but really I'm just completely outnumbered and this is going to be a pretty bad time for me. So he comes in, copter to tank, the classic. Um, and then this is where, you know, you're going to see some really nice walling. Where he's got tank, infantry, and then medium tank in this force. So this force is completely unassailable. This infantry can only be one shot by another anti-air. And then this tank... I have no vision on this forest, so moving into these tiles is super risky. Completely, like, terrible move to try and go for that. So, <laughs> I pretty much am like, okay, like, this is, this could be really bad. I can't really break this tank. I can't break this infantry. So this copter gets a completely free hit, and it's not like it's complete. It's not like I don't have an air defense, but. His walling is just perfect. And this is also one of the interesting things about Hidden Edge. Well, it's not like exactly great for opters on their own. It's really nice for building these like impromptu walls. Because the forests here provide you like a nice buffer zone. Because it's hard to break through units that are in forests. So if you can position your copters around these sort of forest areas, you get a lot of easy to build walls that are hard to break through without significant investment like a medium tank hitting into a tank so it would kill it all so that's the first um first section so then we're going to skip ahead uh a little bit just move back a little bit so my position here uh eventually the fight starts moving up here and i just want to take uh, note of where my battle copters are positioned because I think it's a pretty good positioning. They're positioned in ways that anti air that would have to hit them on these like river tiles would have to attack from very specific tiles that I'll know about, and they're in one range of a tank build that can be built from this base. So essentially, the anti air will be on shoals and they will be getting hit. Um, by tanks. So they'll pretty much die instantly. So this is also another nice example of how you can use copters against heavy vehicles. So with max, I mean, this is max super, like granted, but two copters with max super are able to completely destroy this medium tank. If this was just like normal uh, power, this would probably be down to like 4 H. But that would still be pretty much like a useless medium at that point. So I can use them for that purpose. Um I would see like because my copters are so close to base reinforcement, I can just use them pretty aggressively. And know that I can continue to keep building tanks and copters. So whenever he kills the copter, I've got another one ready to go. If he has his anti-air in range of my base, I can target the anti-air first, and then the tanks that are alive, I can focus down the copter. And that way, I'm utilizing both the best parts of my units. Tanks against anti-air are great engagements, copters against tanks are great engagements. So, utilizing both of them gives copters a lot of value here. While as, Ogat really can only go for anti-air and tanks. And because of the cost of anti-air, he really can't afford to a lot of the turns go for something heavier, like maybe a medium tank to counter my tanks. He just has to kind of go like straight up tank anti-air into tank copter. And I even have the option of if I want to use my bottom base, I can 
shift it upwards. So it gives me a pretty significant advantage in terms of just brawling. Especially if I can... If I can have turns where the anti-air can't hit copters, then his army composition is much worse. So... We skip ahead a little bit. There's a lot of brawling things happen, but eventually the copter plus tank build will eventually win out, just because of how overwhelming it is to deal with very short reinforcement range from this airport, and just like, I think it's just a better build than I think Antier. In general, if you can keep the numbers pretty even, or the difference between your air and your Antier. So, that gives me a nice buffer, and then eventually, we're going to shift to the last part where I'm going to talk about copters. And that's how copter spam, specifically like building copters every single turn, massing tons, like six, seven copters, can be a game-winning decision. Just because copters are very unique in the fact that they don't take damage from almost like 90% of units. The only units that damage them are copters and anti air I mean, there's fighters too, but those are 20,000. They're way too expensive to build in most maps because uh, you'll only be able to build one and then a bunch of infantry. So not really that reasonable to deal with copters. So in this position, Hogat shifts everything down or death balling it. That's kind of, you know, typical fog stuff. Throw everything in a mass and try to throw it at your opponent, especially in max mirrors. That's kind of a, kind of a theme. So... <clears throat> We slowly start like picking away at each other trying to see like what's the air defense of the other person let's you know let's see so i'm just trying to see okay how many copters does he have i'm kind of feeling like my air defense is pretty good like two anti-air two two max copters max copters might as well just be anti-air when they're in a super like they can one shot other copters so it's it's pretty good i can deal with four copters on a single turn and go through them and I felt like, okay, well, if he has, like, that many, that seems like a pretty reasonable amount. But Fog, you never know. And Ogat had a lot of copters. He had five here. He moved them up, and he was slowly building up, like, a lot of copters. He has one, two, three, four, five, six. So when he supers, he kills a lot of my front line. But my next turn is really good, and I'm able to... That's the end of it, but... Max Blast, Breakthrough, one Copter Kill, two Copter Kills, three Copter Kills, four Copter Kills. At this point, I was like, there's no way he can have, like, that many more Copters. Like, I was pretty, I was pretty certain, like, okay, like, he's got, like, these, like, two Copters left or whatever. Like, there's, like, no way I'm gonna lose now. Like, I just got such an insane wall break onto his third line. But having those six copters instead of my four air defense my air defense is completely dead this turn if he focuses it down i'm gonna have nothing because he has an anti-air for one of the copters he has tanks and medium tanks for the other two anti-air to completely destroy them and then this copter can probably be completely neutered by a max copter first hit so and then that is what happens so Moves this down, blocks this copter off with this anti-air, so this copter's pretty safe from where it hit. He can use that medium tank to kill the anti-air. Uses the recon to see what I'm doing. He can see that there's an anti-air here. And then, you know, it's this copter, so... My air defense just went from, like, four air defense units to zero in one turn. Because this anti-air can't... Uh, affect the front lines this turn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It would need seven moves to get to the copter, and because Hogat has that vision, he knows there's like no danger for taking this first hit against this copter. So vision and blocking are pretty key because this cop, this recon has a double purpose. It's first giving vision to see if there's any anti-air in the range, and then it's also providing a block. If I don't have, I need to do something to kill this recon if I want to be able to get to this copter. Which is not, when there's a lot of tanks and medium tanks around and anti-air, you usually don't want to use your tank hits onto recons because they aren't really providing like a lot of threat to your main force. So this is kind of smart, even if I did have some kind of answer, would be uh, leaving a tank in front of me. So the 
walling positioning really good making sure his copters are perfectly safe the next turn and then proliferating copters he wants to he knows i don't have much air defense he's gonna very much abuse that so my next turn i kind of go in uh but as you can see i've only hit his land vehicles i have done nothing to his air even though i have a pretty big uh, income lead, or not income lead, but unit value lead. Uh, this positioning of my heavy units is pretty terrible. Honestly, they're kind of out on their own, and they're also within copter reinforcement range of this one turn. So, this very unique position of this airport makes it really strong. That's not like, it's not like usually super strong on Hidden Edge, as I was saying, because of how maneuverable the copters are. Uh, can't really use that part of them, but the fact that he can hit right away makes this a lot stronger of a build. So I was a little hasty in the end. The next turn, you can see the copters are just in there. Like, you go back, you can see Max Force comes in, and the copters just wail on my units. They are taking no damage at all, they're getting so much value. And the next thing is. How do I break through this? I just built two anti-air because I know, like, holy crap, my air defense is in the garbage bin right now. But how do I use these anti-air? If he's blocking sufficiently with his land units, I need more land units to deal with it. But I also have the same problem of I need more air defense because he's continuing, continuing to spam copters. Like, this is how air superiority can get overwhelming extremely quickly in these kinds of games because of walling from your land units. If you can wall efficiently with your land units, your air units just might as well just be invincible units. Like, it's kind of crazy uh, how strong Kogat made these units on this. So, I'm able to sort of break through this. I use ink and anti-air, and I'm like, I just gotta desperately get some kills. Like, I cannot allow them to have so many copters, and that's one of the problems, is then you become a little bit more desperate. So. Then he's like, okay, well, you know, you, you killed a copter, great, but I'm just, like, slaughtering your army. I've got more copters. What are you going to do? Are you going to kill another copter next turn? Like, now your vision is complete crap. You've got a medium tank build for some reason, and... This is where the game just kind of turned really bad. Because once you get your opponent down to such low unit count... It's really hard to even to get to copters at all because you need a couple units to break through a wall and then you need an anti-air to get through and you need the sufficient vision and when all those conditions aren't met uh, you get these really hard situations so this is sort of the end of the game where you know, breaks through and then i resign but i think this is a really interesting game to showcase copter positioning we'll get used the forests on hidden edge to create these impenetrable walls where I can't get into his copters. And then he was able to get multiple hits off with all his copters for the most part and really make this one base, one airport side just impossible for me to deal with. Um, and on the top, when I had the airport lead, I was able to utilize it by pushing it onto these sort of vulnerable tiles, making anti-air overextend, dealing with the medium tank with the copters and getting a lot of value out of there. So I think this is a great showcase of copter superiority winning game. But uh, hopefully this video was uh, informative on some tactics you can use with copters uh, and just sort of like general tips uh, for how to get the most out of that unit because copters, unlike most units, they can really be a win condition for you because of how little damage they take from other units. But anyway, I hope you had a good time watching this video, and I will see you in a new video.